Everybody's excited about their bow drill kit. The Greg Ovens methodology. Okay. This could work. <laughs> One's a rocket blaster. I'm not putting your fire down. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy. That should do it. Chef and I are building this smoker. What you find with bushcraft is you're always improvising. The food has been awesome. The cook really knows what he's doing. The chef. Massive pot of mushroom the size of my face. I'm going to use the spruce as a bed underneath the chicken. That's perfect. That's perfect right there, baby. You gotta use sticks in the bush. My mouth is watering, boys. Is it? Oh yeah. Oh good. There we go. Look at the size of that thing. That's what I'm after, Chef. We're gonna get some oysters on the fire here. Try it my way. Isn't that good? That is so good. Greg's peer pressured me and I'm gonna do it. Oh, oh. he doesn't like it. <laughs> oh, it's long as it's going back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. There we go. Oh. So we're uh, just going to head out and do a little bit of mushroom foraging. I know a lot of you like that. Vaughn who is Barb's uh, son. One of his her sons is gonna show us a spot where he got some pine mushrooms last week. So we'll go check it out. So we're all uh, kind of scouring along this lake here, looking for some pines. Lots of mushrooms, but I don't know most of these that I'm seeing so keep looking for pines or chanterelles or ones that I actually know right moves hot on camera there Woo. all right nice and easy Got it, bud. <laughs> it's like riding a bike up a mountain <laughs> with no road, but I'm using my feet. Hey, are you flexing? Finn, how did you get this so fast? All this moss with here is so beautiful. It does works of art in nature. Whee! <laughs> Look at that. We didn't need to go anywhere. It's, so this is what we were looking for. Yeah. And it's just chilling. Like a silly little goose. Yeah, you don't usually find them this big. That's a big mushroom. Chip yeah, boy. It looks like it's a big prize beauty. Hundred dollars or more. Located by Vaughn, the man, the myth, the legend. This is a pine mushroom, everybody. Matsutake. <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna cook it up. Maybe, maybe turn it into a salad. Who knows? <laughs> Fry it up. Saute. Sometimes your sock is just in your drawer if you're looking for it. And that's the case here with this mushroom. We climbed that up and over the hill, <laughs> under the bridge. But it was just right under our nose the entire time. So, see that edge right there, and the little bit around the stem from when it was younger. Yeah. It just busted yeah. out. It just got too big. That's crazy. 
Are there any like similar species that look like this that are poisonous? No. Nice. Not that I know. I'm gonna okay. talk to Gray again. Yeah. Eat, eat it though, just to I, see it. I, I <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> you can sure tell the pines by the, the smell. smell. Yeah. Okay. It's a nutty kind of a smell. Yeah. Huh? Like socks. I, I don't. Was it? Right there, you go. We got it. We got one. If we could get a couple more, it'd be better, obviously, right? We'd be flush. I wanna swallow it on the car. <laughs> Probably not. Nice. That's a good hot spot. Got some wood sod and some tar mud troops. Nice. Get out of here. How's your sous chef doing? Oh, he's right doing now. well. All right. So this rock right here looks like blue cheese. <laughs> then it steps right on it. <laughs> so you found some, eh? Yeah, they're just straight up in front of you here somewhere. Nice. My buddy Joe, he'll be jealous. It's warmer. <laughs> oh, I see one here, but it's yeah, they're a little past either. that's finished. Walk Was around. one here? Uh, did you pick these? I uh, know I didn't touch them yet. They just oh. really like to kick them around. Well, there's a few, but yeah, squirrels and deer have been at it. Oh, here's one under here. There's a couple. See. Uh, not really. They're finished. They're kind of rotted. Right here. There's one little guy. Is that a keeper? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. That was one hell of a pine mushroom. Yeah, a bit past stem. due, but yeah, look at... That was a monster. That was a big one. Holy... Yeah. <laughs> Just not really edible. We got a couple of pine mushrooms for the boys to try. And um, other than that, we got to build a bushcraft smoker again to do that salmon that I've got on the brine in the fridge. Um, I've obviously made bushcraft smokers on the 30 day challenges. And, but I'm going to make a different uh, type of smoker so it won't be the same materials. We're going to use the sword fern. It's a different type of smoker. I don't like repeating the same stuff over and over, obviously, but you know, it's uh, we've had some success with the mushrooms. I think we're going to go out at low tide in the dark. We have to go in the dark because low tide is around eight, nine o'clock tonight and try to get some mussels because we would like to make a really good seafood chowder. Uh, since we got the chef here, I'd like to uh, get him to do it. We'll just get all the ingredients. We're gonna have to buy some at the store, but as far as crab, oysters, whatever we can get ourselves, um, uh, it's just, man, I just love seafood chowder when it's full of lobster and crab and scallops and prawns and so. And uh, Lee gave me some prawns. So we're gonna get the ingredients together and then tomorrow hopefully make a seafood chowder, big pot of it, because it won't go far. Right on, but we'll get this uh, smoker going and get our salmon going, right on. So Sam wants to try to start the fire with his ferro rod. So this is good stuff. If you spark it anywhere here where you see this fine stuff, or up here, I would break this in two because what you want to do is take the one piece like I did in the fire last night. You should be able to break this. I don't want to wreck our fiber, so but it looks like I am. But anyway, try what's this guy like? 
Just just spark, yeah. just spark it, see, see, see if you get they're all see you're getting sparks already. There you go. Oh yeah, it's, I guess the wow the coal catches so much better than the paper. Oh my god. There you go. Yeah, I think the key was I thought that I was gonna blow out the the embers. I didn't think that they're gonna blow hard. Yeah, I didn't think that they're gonna stoke so well with the, with the oxygen. It's ripping. Gotta let me do some of it, Greg. Well, I'm just showing you for this. No, 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 I know. I know. I'm just joshing. There. No, so. that was. I take back what I said prior. That actually seemed easier than it was. It's pretty easy. But yeah, I think my problem was for some reason I thought um, I thought it would be better to go with fresh wood and paper than the old coal. Uh, I don't know why I thought wood that. Can be, unless you make a feather stick. Pretty good ferro rod, right? Yeah. Not too shabby. Yeah. Got the fire going. We'll get a couple steaks going and then do the smoking. And then do the smoking, yeah, Sweet. for sure. Awesome. Everybody is working on bow drill kits. We're going to have a little bow drill competition. Might have to be tomorrow. We're running out of light. we got to get the smoker done, but everybody's excited about their bow drill kits and a uh, little competition never hurt anybody. My string loosened. But I think I got her. Oh, I knocked it out. That almost dead center. Oh, dang. Ready? Yeah. It's not tight enough. Yeah, the the can't see the ember, but no, you gotta keep going. Yeah, right? so you won't get it. yeah. Be interesting. Trying the Greg, the Greg Ovens methodology of bow drilling by using a very large object to leverage weight so you can focus on more important things. Hi, Tim. No. Not even close. It needs to be tight. Three is too loose, too. Yeah. Okay. That's good work. Nice one. Oh yeah. You okay? Oh, okay. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> so close like Greg. No. Oh, Bonnie did a great thing. I don't even know no. how that long. <laughs> no, you should have had her butt. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's so moist. Not deep enough. 
your drill is past where you're trying to catch your spark that's the idea of cutting your pie shape all the way through to your hole yeah because you should have had it yeah you need to cut your knot in the side okay they're both mitch metals of about five different metals yeah uh lathodyninium uh cerium yours probably has flint uh magnesium but then mine is cerium which burns far hotter than the metals in these yeah and that's why i can get the sparks i do should we do a little side by sider just to well, show the people yeah so this is this is what mine does okay yeah <laughs> And this is what his does. Mine is like fireworks. <laughs> one's a rocket blaster and one's nothing. <laughs> and the reason is because this is 50% cerium. He probably doesn't even have cerium in his. This and cerium constant. burns at like 5,000 degrees. Yours is probably a combination of flint. You see, your, your sparks aren't even the same color as my sparks. And this is much more silver, right? Or at least yes. it looks like in comparison. Well, it is. It is. See? Yeah. Now... You're you're running off of flint mostly. Mm -hmm. Flint is not the hot, hottest spark. Nothing compared to cerium. And your sparks are orange. Mine are almost white because of the heat. Mm -hmm. See how your sparks are orange? Yeah. Whereas mine are almost white. Oh, oh just wait. I'm, I'm hitting a bad spot on my ferro rod. What's going on now? It's trippy. Yeah, well, like I say, it's really hard to work with. Mm hmm I'll get it. Ooh. But now you see my sparks, they fly wow. like two feet. They're still burning because of the cerium and they're white. Yeah. They're five times hotter than your sparks. It's crazy. Greg, you got to do a ferro rod New Year's Eve special with those fireworks. <laughs> yeah. so you well, you should have seen the sparks when it was full length, when it was six inches by half inch. Uh, I could throw sparks like three, four feet, man, easy. And still start a fire. So in a survival situation, Greg, do you want the bad ferro rod or do you want the good ferro rod? I just you tell want, the people. You want a good ferro rod with the right Mitch metals. Lathodyninium, phasodyninium, cerium, not flint and magnesiums. Uh, there's a big difference. But did you see how your sparks are orange? Yeah. Mine are white? Yeah. Because the white is showing how much hotter it is. Yeah. No, it's night and day. Okay, now let, let me try to start a yeah. fire. Uh, Let's do it up. With uh, mine. It's a this is double the length, and it's producing Nine maybe one-tenth, maybe one-fifth. Well, about a fifth of the heat. Yeah. You know, you did get your fire with that. Yeah. I'm not putting your fire down. It's, it's, <laughs> my, mine is getting so small, it's hard to even use. Yeah. You know? But I mean, I should be able to start it from here, really. But that's a point of pride for you. But oh my God! You're right. The one from a foot away. You I got it going. Yeah, you. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, you won't be able to do that with yours. Yeah. What? Oh my God! They're literally fireworks. They look like a crackler. And I'm not even near it. Jesus. Okay, we are down collecting oysters for our seafood chowder. These guys are eating them raw. I don't like doing that. Some of them are hard to get off though. My mouth is watering, boys. Is yeah. it? Oh yeah. Oh good. Have you tried a raw one yet while we're out here? No, but I really want to. Yeah, let's bust one up. <laughs> Go for it. That's a nice fresh oyster. That's a little, a, little bit, a little bit of a crunchy crunchies on the side of it. <laughs> Smells like gas. Should I crack it open? Oh my god. 
That is so good. That's fresh, eh? Mm-hmm. Incredible. What's the half of this one? That's a little bigger. Split moisture? We'll do it like a uh, lady in the tramp style. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a lady in tramp that thing? <laughs> Splitting an oyster seems insane. You can get the chunky and then I'll get the other end. Especially when there's, <laughs> especially when there's so many and yeah, you just get your own. Some of them are just lying around. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah, the small ones. Yeah. I like the small ones kind of. Logan does have like a bunch of feet long as well. We take a peek so we know what we're looking for, eh? Oh, I can go. Uh, I got oh. that one. Okay. Beautiful. Perfect. There we go. So, so far, we've got about mm. what, 10, 12? Oh, we got more now. More than that. 13, 14, 15, 16. Greg, let's see. I always forgot being before my life. Here. No, that's what, what I'm after. <laughs> Greg, can you show the camera that? Yeah. See? That's what I'm after, Chef. All right. <laughs> this this right here, guys, is the biggest oyster that I've ever seen in my entire life. That is, that's something right there. That's, big one too, that's right? cool. <laughs> Want to use a knife at all for that, or? No, I like to do it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Two rocks? That'll do it. Yeah, that, that little hatch, it's a perfect oh, little thing for it, yeah, I feel like. We're, good. we're getting there, man. Now, I don't know, but uh, how long do you think that they would keep in, like, the fridge? Oh, if we, uh... Two days? Three days? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If, uh, without ice, yeah, two to three days. Uh, Maximum a week, uh, but that's with ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird, eh? Wait, what? <laughs> Is what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just destroyed it. You did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Ah, oh, it's in New York. I just killed that oyster. Wow. Huh? That was like the best oyster I've ever had. Is that right? Oh, that's a nice big guy. I'll try eating this one raw. That's a nice big one. See, that's the kind of I like. That's a chunky monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm after right there, man. Look at the size of that thing. It's crazy. That'll definitely so, that'll keep you alive. Greg, how, how, how old do you think this oyster is here? I don't know, man. I don't know how quick they grow, to be honest. I think they take a couple of years. Old growth oyster for sure. But yeah, look at the size of that guy. It's alive though, it's moving. And yeah, that's what I'm after. You can, if, if, they, if they're big enough too, you can, you can treat that, that the abductor muscle like a scallop. Because that's what the scallop is, is one big abductor muscle. Hmm. Just trying to get all the shell off. Look at that. Okay, that's a, that's a nice one. Protein. Mm -hmm. I still prefer them cooked. <laughs> yeah. You want the rest of that? Yeah, give me that. Can't let that go to waste. No. I don't mind them raw, but nah. Smoked, cooked on the fire. Thank you so much. So let's get to it. Hey, Vaughn. Good find, buddy. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so we're going to get some oysters on the fire here. And this is going to be great. Chef's going to do it his way tomorrow, but I just I just feel like having them some the way that I like to do them. I just throw them on the fire till the shell opens, and they're usually done. So, in the flames, you can put them right in the flames. doesn't matter, because look at the size of that one. Cheers. There's two, actually. One on top of each other, but anyway. This is great. Oh, that was fantastic. This is a chair, Not right? just great. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then we just wait for the shells to open. It's probably enough on there for now. They're just going to pop when they're ready to go, eh? They'll just open up, yep. Hey, Rick, is that the biggest oh. oyster you've ever seen? <laughs> One just squirted me. <laughs> Popped early. <laughs> Sprayed me right all over. So you might want to watch for that. They might, get might shoot you. 
Well, actually, the shells do blow up too, so watch your eyes and stuff. Well, now you hear that we're in the splash zone for the juice and the shrapnel. Well, that's right. <laughs> they, they can shoot off pretty bad sometimes. These ones are done. Pretty true. The sooner we get them off the fire, oh, baby. the safer it will be. It is. <laughs> Danger's <laughs> over. To me, that is good, okay? Here, try one. Okay, there you go, buddy. So I this lens. Give her a go. Burpee? Oh, yeah. Get an oyster yeah, in you, yeah. buddy. Try one. Try it my way. I He's insist. Gonna try it your way tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do it your way tomorrow. I'll just try it. Just, just, just do it the Greg way. We're not going to throw these shells in the fire. I made a mistake and threw one in. Yeah, it's hot. That's really hot. It's warm. So it's down a little just bit. Let it cool a bit. Yeah. Oh, it's smoky. Right. Yeah, you can smell the smoke. It smells like yeah. the brininess of it, man. Like, I was trying to smell a piece of the fresh one just this couple, just just a couple seconds ago, and that was uh, that was fresh, man. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What about it? Oh man, <laughs> Greg, isn't that good? That is so good. Oh man, it's, it's like a muscle flavored almost, but like. But you can almost taste the smoke even. You can. Because for some reason, when you do them on a the fire, even for a short time like that, when the shell opens, the smoke gets in there and it's almost like a smoked oyster. Mm -hmm. Just that quick a little. Yeah, nice light smoke. Yeah. Almost like a scallop. That's the size that I like. Oh yeah. Jeez. Well, you actually like that, right, Chef? I do. This looks delicious. That, 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 that is what I prefer now, as the cooked oyster than, than a raw oyster. Oh, my God. Look at that. He's converted. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay, well, who's next? You got you to get in there, too, soon. In there. All right, boys. Give me a little baby oyst. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's Bobby peer pressured me, and I'm going to do it. Ooh. No, look at that caramelization of the tops. That was incredible. Kind of burnt on the top there, but you can, oh, you can see the light brown. Kind of caramelized. That's the way I like it. That was a good shot, Rippy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to do another batch. Rippy's enjoying himself over here. Yeah. That'll be smoked. Beautiful. No, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not like it, it was a dead one or anything. You'd know if it was a dead one. Oh yeah, it would. I would know. Be it wrong. It wouldn't be talking back to you. <laughs> I could eat those all day long. Usually more accustomed to small oysters, but Greg's taking me out of my comfort zone, and uh, that's what it's about, I guess. <laughs> and the verdict is. Pretty intense. <laughs> Pretty intense. <laughs> is it hot? Oh. He doesn't like it. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you swallow it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. I can't do it. Don't. <laughs> so he doesn't even like oysters. I love oysters, but I love He doesn't love them the way I do, Greg. Oh, okay. He only likes particular types oh, of big ones. That was too big for him. <laughs> <laughs> Boys? Boy, it sounds like you're having a tough yeah. time. Boys, I'm pulling out. That was intense. I didn't throw up, but I almost did. Yes. <laughs> and I, I did try it, though. I didn't swallow it, but... Yeah. You went way outside your comfort zone. I got close to it. That yeah, smaller yeah. one? That one? Oh, that's cute. Just a really cute guy, you know? It's going to taste like popcorn. Okay. <laughs> Oyster popcorn. The other ones are like oyster steaks. Ben, how many oysters have you had today? I just had a couple oyster steaks. <laughs> how many have I had? I think that was like nine. <laughs> Morning. So, 
we had a pretty good day yesterday. We uh, got those oysters. We got a couple of pine mushrooms, even though they're pretty much finished. Uh, we're having a lot of fun here on the island. And uh, the salmon fishing, it's been good so far. We got a lot to come. But, you know, I was showing uh, Barb's garden and how she preserves all her own food. She's basically self-sufficient here on Quadra Island. She's got stuff out of the garden year-round and everything's set up properly. And you know, I was thinking that also, the, the thing is about here on the island, like if I had to choose a place to survive a winter living off the land, uh, plants in the bush, this would be the place to do it in Canada. You know, back at home, the plants are all dead. Everything's frozen. And uh, here, everything's green, and the, the plants even stay green all winter. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of some of the wild plants, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Um, it's just, this would be the place to survive a winter. These are cut leaf evergreen blackberries. And they're a little different than the Himalayan, which are here as well. But I just want to show you that even though it's December, basically, in a day or so, there's a lot of unripe berries on the bush that still be edible, still get your minerals, your vitamins, especially C. And they're here year-round, even though they're going to be a little sour. There's tons of them that didn't ripen during the summer. And uh, here we are, like I say, in the winter, and these berries are still on the bush, lots of them. So that's what the leaves look like. And you can see how jagged they are. And uh, look down in here, look at all the berries. Everywhere you look, there's berries on them. Like I say, survival food, they're kind of sour. But look at all the berries that are that didn't ripen in December. We have all these berries. And the entire bush is just full of these berries everywhere you go. Every part of this blackberry has berries. And tucked in here, we have a thistle. Roots would still be good on that. And it'd still be edible in December. And there's a really big thistle. See there? And here we have a big mullen, which would still be good for tea all winter. Still has flowers on it in December. More mullen. So when you've got an area like here on Quadra Island or any of the islands along the coast here, uh, Vancouver Island, the mainland, uh, these plants are out year round. So what a perfect spot if you wanted to do a survival challenge in the winter and you'd still have all these things that you could rely on. It's just fantastic. And then down in here, we've got sheep sorrel which will probably stay green all year. The, uh, the sheep sorrel this time of year is not going to taste as good as in the summer, but in a survival situation, it's not what it tastes like. It's not, it's past its prime. It doesn't really have the lemony flavor that it usually would in the summer. But it's still full of vitamin C, still got the minerals. Survival's not about even enjoying sometimes the food you're eating. It's about getting the nutrients you need. This saw was just hanging up on the shed. <laughs> pretty dull. I'll get my saw. Well, I cannot find my 
my saw in the truck. I might not have brought it. Um, I'll get this one. It just kind of sticks in the wood, eh? It's not very sharp. You want to push down on that end? You got it. Yeah, you just can't push it. There we go. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy. That'll work too. So there's two. And it's high enough. Two. There's got to be something, boys. Somewhere. That should do it. Chef and I are building this smoker. So I haven't made one like this before. So, Chef's never made a smoker. But I have actually made a teepee. So, let's just see how it's going to sit. It's probably about where we want it. So, we're not getting too much heat. You know what I mean? I'm thinking if we go like that. Now, if you didn't have any paracord, what would be a good substitute? Well, you can use vines like we could use these brambles, which probably would have been even cooler. Look at that coming together. It is. That's a good proper. Okay, so that's our main frame. Certainly nothing fancy. Doesn't have to be. That's a good heat right there. Chef, tell the people what you're gonna be doing with this smoked salmon. Smoked salmon, eggs, Benedict. Smoked salmon, eggs, Benedict, everybody. Yeah, nice. Little spruce well, vinegar forward to that. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite knot, guys? My favorite knot? Hmm. Clovage. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, I've never contemplated that question. What's your favorite knot? They all work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? The ways are how long? They're about, yeah. Uh, like, is that gonna be long enough? Or should we put another one here? I think we should put another one here just in case. Great. If we make some more real estate. Okay, now we get fern. <laughs> I'm gonna go on the flex some too. Yeah. The bigger the better. So, I mean, those will work, but. Yeah, it will. You don't put your ferns this way because it's not, the smoke will just come through like in a uh, Venetian blind. You put them this way and then when you layer them, it covers it far better have them all the same direction and then we just tie a bunch together because we can spread them out like a fan once we have like a couple of groups of them. Yeah. And then we'll just put them around. They're going to hang down to about here which will funnel our smoke. Mm -hmm. And we don't put it too close to the fire because we don't want too much heat. Yeah. We try to figure out our heat. You see right about there feels like about 110. That's about what we want or 100. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're going to figure out a way to funnel the smoke into our smoker. Which is the key. You need smoke for a smoker. You do. That's not good. Yep, that's working good. Do another one like that, yep. perhaps. Probably one more. Uh, just make sure they're big like these ones. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Oh, it's so... <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Well, you're going to have to get your own blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just want to keep tying those together like you did, yep. I'm going to get another batch as well. Sometimes you fall, but it's about how you get back up. That's what, that's what matters, you know? Never give up.
Okay, that's probably good for now. We'll start with those. There's no point cutting more than we need. Damn. That thing's looking like a peacock tail. Yeah, man. <laughs> and that's kind of what we want. We'll need more ferns yet. Yeah. Put our fish in. I can just unloop these now. Mm -hmm. no. Put the fish in. And then all you do is you just... That's what the loop's for, you just hang them there. Hmm? It's such a simple system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's smart. Okay, we'll put these on and then that might almost do it. Okay, I think that's good on that side. Super cool. Yeah. Ethan, I see you got the stick. I see you, it's a stick. I got you some rope for that. What's up? Mm -hmm. I got you some rope for that. Yeah, I, I need two pieces of rope. I'm going to do you these and pairs of two. He's playing his game again. Hey, little mister. I see it's a wood. That's what that is. We're just going to rinse our fish off, get rid of that extra cure, and uh, bring it outside. Texture is nice and firm. It's going to be good eating. You can see all the moisture that's been removed from the fish. This is step one of preserving your fish protein. Is there any, is there any paper towel inside? I don't think so, uh... Okay, we need some. You can see that nice rich orange hue on the fish. This right here, you can just eat it by itself. Uh, it's, it's been... Here, it's nice and firm. Sam, would you, would you, would you like a try piece? Mm. Is it is it ready? Yeah, you need like you need like this grab box essentially. Really? My, minus the herbs. I kind of do, but I also kind of don't. Should I? Yeah. Give me a baby piece. I'll give you a baby, baby, baby piece. Yeah. I'll give you one of the more cured pieces too as well. Appreciate the bit. Oh. Mm. For you, Sam. Behind the camera. Even more, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Matthew Burby Jones. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. Hey, buddy. What's up, dog? So which wood are we using here today, Greg? We are using alder. Alder wood. Which is a good smoking wood. People use it a lot for smoking. Nice. I personally have never had that before or used it before, so it's going to be a big treat for me. Yeah. Yeah, see the smoke coming through our, uh, our ferns? That's what we want. And then I'm just gonna put some more here and there. Just a little touch up. Yeah. So I'm gonna fix this up. You know, like you get the main concept, but now I might have to play for a while and get it just how we want it. Okay. I'm gonna get some more ferns and we'll uh, get a stick somehow. Then did you end up like this? And then we'll put, and then we'll collect more heat and smoke the fish. Mm -hmm. What you find with bushcraft is you're always improvising and uh, and adapting and changing stuff and working at it because it's not working the way you want. And, and once I put this one, it's going to push our smoke where we want it, so we'll be right on. So our bushcraft smoker is uh, doing good. Just trying to get a little more smoke to come through it. 
without burning the leaves off. I can tell that these are almost ready to catch on fire. We've got too much heat there, see? And uh, we don't want that. I mean, what was happening is our ferns, as you can see, were too close to the heat. And uh, they're ready to burn our smoker down. <laughs> so we're going to try to get our ferns up higher on this support here and funnel some more smoke at the same time. Smoker is working just right. You can see the smoke coming out of the top of it. Pretty happy with the way it worked, even though it's a simple design. It's just a matter of keeping enough smoke in there to do your stuff. Okay, so here we have our wonderful pine mushrooms we forged yesterday. Let's watch, see how they float. It's like a boat, but it's, it's not, it's a mushroom. The ends of these are probably gonna trim off about that much. It's a little bit too tough to eat. You see the, the, the they give on my fingers here compared to the top of the stem versus the base of the stem. Now the reason why you wanna wash the mushrooms or any vegetables that come from the dirt is that there are bugs, nematodes, parasites, and other bacteria that are not suitable for consumption that will make you sick. So you want to make sure that you thoroughly wash your root vegetables and mushrooms and whatnot from dirt so you don't get sick. So you're, uh, you're utilizing the smoker for the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Fun. I didn't realize this was going to be a multi-purpose smoker. It take a while to cool down, but they sure are good. I tell you, there's your clam. I'm gonna say you, sure. <laughs> 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 need this for the chicken later, but I'm gonna get this thing fixed first. It's just the one clam that I found. <laughs> take a look at my clam. So this is the only one I got. <laughs> Not much of a clam, but it's the best I got. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, man. That's a hundred times better than the oyster. Really? I'm a clam, I, I, I'm a clam man. It was so salty, too. Like the brininess of that. A full hundred times better than the oyster, eh? Want to try a little piece? Yeah. Burpees pickens. <laughs> it's hard to get out. Oh, here we go. Mm. I wouldn't say a hundred like... times better. <laughs> <laughs> we had some uh, oysters, man. I... I have trouble staying out of the smoked oysters as well. It's uh, the food has been awesome. The cook really knows what he's doing, the chef. And uh, we're gonna do a chicken on the fire tonight, so that should be awesome as well. Fish is almost done. I'm not gonna do it overnight. We tried a piece, and you can taste the perfect smoked amount. And ah, that fish is just awesome. He's going to do uh, eggs benedict with some of the fish tomorrow. Excellent food. So we collected the spruce and you're going to do what with it? I'm going to use the spruce as a bed. 
underneath the chicken so that the flavor of the of the spruce as it burns will go up and through it into the chicken and like somewhat smoke it a little bit and give that flavor of the, of the, of the spruce. Also, I'm gonna put some oregano, thyme, and rosemary on top of the spruce as well mm -hmm. so that all those flavors will come up into the chicken. Burpee, how do you feel about night cooking? Oh, it's like night skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Funny games. So you get a post you can't see. <laughs> But everything is lit right now. He's one of the cameras. I'm lit. Y'all are lit. Fire's lit. Fire's lit. <laughs> yeah. Here we have our massive pot of mushroom the size of my face, courtesy of the Wendell family and Mr. Vaughn himself, the avid billy goat of the mountains up here. He just pounced around everywhere up the hills, going four times as fast as everybody else in the team. Searching for his for these uh, for these pine mushrooms and l let me tell you this guy is one with the woods We're gonna go ahead and remove This massive stem. Yeah, this mushroom look wild on camera. It's so big Then we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half And we're gonna cut it into thicker pieces here cuz we're gonna we want to get a nice good sear on them So let's cut it into the little like Triangles or something like that. We're gonna cut them, cut them in the fun shapes. That's good service area for when we sear it onto the heat. Tahini, lemon juice, salt, water. This is going to be for our charred kale. Uh-huh. Oh my god. And pine mushrooms are my favorite. Chimkin time. Chimkin. <laughs> <laughs> Paprika time! It's gonna actually come out. <laughs> Parsley, paprika, garlic salt, olive oil, more garlic, <laughs> pepper, <laughs> and love. That's the way, the best way to do it, I think. Oh yeah, all right. Let's, <laughs> let's get this marinade all over this chimkin. Bless you. Someone's knees. Look at that, nice and somewhat steamed, nice and crispy on the edges. Let's give it a little try here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Here's our tahini, our dressing. Le chop. Doing a little kale dip. Ooh. Yep, yep. Like right. so. Mm -hmm. This means it is time to put the chicken on the fire. Yeah, but you... how come the numbers are going up, not down? I was counting up. <laughs> 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 Layer this over top. Okay. Like so. All right. Rosemary's are good. Oh yeah, I like it's a serious bundle. Did 
you. Three, two, one. Remove one of the logs so that we don't have as much heat that's so intense of burning the herbs that are supposed to slow that better <laughs> supposed to lightly smoke up. So the bottom of this is probably nice and black like my dad, but <laughs> you know that the top of it, the top of it is where we're gonna be eating. So that's so when we flip this, yeah, everything will be just fine. <laughs> I agree with you too because this is where our meat is. This hasn't been ruined. The best teacher is learning like hands on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just like how quick we all were. We're like, this is an idea, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> was tight. Yeah, like, like, bring, bring your light real close to this. <laughs> that did come close together to really fast. Like, like, yeah. It's still actually it's still green. The underside is actually not even charged. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I was, what I was hoping was going to happen. <laughs> just a mad rush to save the chicken. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Like. We all came to a very quick consensus that we don't want to be eating burned chicken. <laughs> Beats courtesy of... Barb, bro. Beats by Barb. Nice. Okay, so we got to flip this chicken. Where to keep the... It's looking good on that side, though, you know. There it is. We're getting a bit more flame. We might have to move some wood again, but okay, that's that, that looks like okay. Around for that. Well, two minutes ain't gonna make a difference. Okay. This is Barbara's zucchini relish. Okay. All in one bite. Oh man, that's it right there. You mean they, if you can make the woman that won it? I'm gonna go ahead and let this infuse now. Let the flavors meld, come together, become a homogenous flavor rainbow. Yeah, you know what? That was the funnest part. Is just being with the other participants yeah. and you're joking around. Yeah, just having fun. And you're just yeah. having fun. Yeah. You know that's yeah. the fun part. Yeah. But I, I says to the production, I says, you know, it would be really interesting for all the production crew to try to spend even 10 days yes exactly yeah right? yeah yep <laughs> yeah i can flip the bird for you <laughs> Just a little uh, cut test here this looks amazing oh my god oh, do you see that is that's perfect that's perfect right there baby yep all right i agree it, <laughs> they'd have a protest tick Chickens would be protesting. Chickens versus yeah, us. Oh, I think that's just perfect, man. It's juicy. Oh, yeah. Yum. Excited to see these mushrooms. Okay. I can get them close enough to you. Wow. Oh, yeah. You don't know, like the raw mushrooms. I'd like them cut. I, I like them cut too. Okay.
to the pen and move. I don't know how to go this day. All of the components for our meal have, have now been completed. Hey Greg! Yeah. Which cut of chicken would you like to enjoy tonight? I want a little bit of breast and a little bit of cut. That's done perfect. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. What am I doing here? That's too small. Let's I need some... more meat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in that thigh right there. Maybe a tad on the raw side. Tad on the there. raw, a little bit, a little bit underdone there, a little bit. This meat here on top is done. That interior. See what I mean? How chicken can fool it's, you. I know it's so hard. Even chicken at home. Chicken on a fire can be hard. Even at home though, like he, it's it's still. I would, I would say this right here is done. This right here, the wing. Leg, yeah, I mean. That's probably good. But you know what? This breast meat is all good. Breast meat is done. We can always it's put just, some uh, back on for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those legs got to go back onto the fire. They're a little bit underdone. But you know what? I don't have a thermometer. So you know what? Like the good news is I have the pieces that are already <laughs> cooked. Precisely. So you guys will have to wait longer. <laughs> Played him up. You know, you just eager beaver over here. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's good. <laughs> and it's usually the thighs or yeah, the chicken. Because there. of all the bone that's there. It, it's just always the thighs. It seems. Tell me when we want to stop. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Let's let's not overdo it right all now. All right, face. Make sure everybody gets enough. Because I've eaten lots of pines. I had them not long ago, so that's good. That's good. Perfect. And, like, I like to use sticks for my... Gotta use sticks in the bush. What did you think it was gonna be? You thought he was gonna pick up a spoon, viewers? Try to complicate my life with implements and utensils. <laughs>